Good morning. My name is Camilla Tolman. I'm the director of IIED, the International Institute for Environment and Development, and I'm very happy to be here with my colleague Charles Godfrey. Charles, introduce yourself. My name is Charles Godfrey, and I work at Oxford University, where I'm director of the Oxford Martin Programme for the Future of Food. And we were both members of the lead expert group. In fact, Charles was the chief of the chair, chair of the leg of the lead expert group of the Foresight Programme on Global Food and Farming Futures. This was a two-year programme of work commissioned by the UK's Government Office of Science, led by Professor John Beddington. So it was a two-year um, programme of work. It launched in January 2011 and cost around a million pounds. Um, it also had the political um, leadership, if you like, of two ministries within the UK government, the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs and the Department for International Development. And those two ministers providing oversight and leadership of the programme of work, I think was very important in terms of making sure that we got both a UK-centric but also an international environment and food system approach. Um, it also meant that the findings from the report could feed into a whole range of different arenas um, much more easily. So Charles, what did you think our main outcome, what was the thing that satisfied you most about the Foresight report that we did best? Well, I think the great advantage we had was that we were able to look at the whole of the food system. We weren't constrained to just looking at agriculture, for example. So we were able to look at both the issues of supply, demand, issues of waste, issues of governance. And we had the privilege that we had the resources that we could go out and we could get real expertise coming in. And so I, I think we produced about 50 pages, about 2,000 pages that are on the web for, for people to mm. download. So we were able to do that, and then we were able to say, uh, things that uh, involve the whole food system. So looking ahead at some of the challenges, uh, we're able to say that uh, essentially action was needed not just on, on supply, supply issues were very important, but demand was needed, changes in governance. And also we were able to look at each of these issues through the twin perspectives of sustainability, the challenge of climate change, but other effects as well. And also issues of equitability, equity, and the needs of the poorest, especially in low-income countries. So I think it was that our ability to look at a problem holistically that I was most pleased we were able to do in the, in the report. Well, certainly for me, I thought one of the very strong points was the recognition that um, hunger is also very much of a political issue and that you need more voices coming in behind the need to address hunger, which otherwise governments can often forget. I think we also had some very good, clear, practical examples from around the world of where policy and practice is moving in the right direction, so that rather than people throwing up their hands in horror and saying there's nothing to be done, actually there's some very clear examples. But Jules pretty put together, did he not, um, a survey of... Yes, I mean, so often the narrative from Africa is that uh, it's all doom and gloom when it comes to food production there. And of course there are fantastic examples of what has happened in agriculture, uh, both in conventional agri agriculture one says, but also uh, enormously impressive examples of how smallholder farming communities have been enabled to increase production. And Jules Pretty got, to, got together, I think it was 20 examples of, um, of um, smallholder initiatives which had really taken off and asked of these which were scalable. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very pos po positive message, some of which were quite well known. For, for example, the tremendous progress that has been made in uh, agroforestry in the Sahel, or the push-pull system of increasing biological control in uh, maize crops in, in Kenya. But others were much less well known. And hopefully that will help dispel some of the unremitting gloom and doom you sometimes see about uh, food production in Africa. Some very nice examples of sustainable yep. intensification mm -hmm. in practice to flesh out what that might mean as a term. Um, for me, certainly, I thought that one of the great strengths of the Foresight Project was the fact that it didn't stand alone 
as um, something, trying to say something perhaps completely new and different. It was very much building on a number of other such reports and in its turn, I think, has offered a lot of insights and findings that other, other people, other governments, other commissions on food will find useful. So that bit by bit, over time, we build a really strong constituency of people working in this space, draws in lots of different stakeholders from many parts of the world, and builds that political weight behind the urgent need to invest in our food systems now. Thanks. Thank you.